So first question, um, uh -huh. what should we call you? Laron? Pan Amsterdam? What? what? <laughs> No, I mean, whatever. Um, you know, I mean, for this, I guess it's Pan Amsterdam, but you can call me Laurent. It's fine. Yeah. So um, I just want to basically, uh, for the start, just sort of go a bit back. And I want to explore how you first got into music. Like, what got you into jazz and playing the trumpet? That's a good question. I mean, like, uh, when I was about, when I was young, I, I started playing, like, piano uh, when I was about, six or seven my parents mm -hmm. gave me piano lessons then i forgot it totally yeah. and then um but the music you know the love for music was still there my parents listened to a lot of different like uh art forms of music i mean they they listen to everything from grand funk railroad to isaac hayes to the blues to like gospel all kinds of stuff you know so it's just one of these things where I guess I just kind of like, I just, I, I was supposed to be a musician. I mean, even my name <laughs> means uh, um, I have a song. <laughs> a song is mine, actually. I was like, whoa, yeah, you know, so I, was, I guess I was just supposed to be a musician. But around the age of 12, I started getting into um, the cornet. Uh, my dad is, is funny. My dad was adamant about me learning an instrument. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I wanted to be in art, music, and speech because this girl that I liked when I was like in fifth grade was gonna take that for junior high. That was gonna be her extracurricular stuff, you know? Yeah. And so like, um, I wanted to do that. And uh, <laughs> my dad was like, you're not gonna be chasing skirt tails for the rest of your life, you know? <laughs> so he's like, pick an instrument. So I, I chose the violin at first. <laughs> he was like, no, we're not gonna do that, you know? He wanted me to play saxophone. And so then we somehow settled on the trumpet. So my first instrument was a cornet, just to see mm -hmm. if I was gonna be serious about it all. And then later it became the trumpet. But that all started when I was like about 12. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, it, and then obviously you went to um, college and you played your instrument there as well. And then went into music professionally and you've, had a really successful career thus far you've worked with some really iconic people just to name a few you've had uh, you've worked with Erica Badu you've worked with Iggy Pop um, yep. is there anyone where you sort of had to take a step back and compose yourself and you know like was was there anyone that really starstruck you throughout your career Bilal yeah yeah listening to Bilal perform live is a uh... I mean, that was the first time I realized I was in the big leagues. <laughs> that and Roy Hargrove. Yeah. When I heard Roy Hargrove on trumpet, that was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, there were a couple of people. Wynton, when I heard Wynton Marcellus like live, you know, that 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 scared me to death. <laughs> <laughs> Guy's a beast, man, you know, on the instrument. So it's just, um, there were a lot of people. There actually were a lot of people. Billy Harper. Uh, when I first heard his compositions by him played live, was amazing to me. I could I could hear where Kenny Garrett was getting his stuff from, you yeah. know. And it's interesting because Billy's a tenor player and Kenny Garrett's an alto player. Mm. But if you listen to how their lyricism when they're when they're phrasing, you can tell that Kenny Garrett got a lot out of Billy Harper. I also read somewhere that you worked on um, 88 Keys' first album, Death of Adam. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, I did. Didn't you work on the the track that Kanye also worked on on that album? Yeah, uh, Stay Up Viagra. Yeah. Yeah, did yeah I'm you, on that. Did you, yeah. uh, did you meet Kanye in that, or or was that? I didn't meet him. Um, <laughs> I have a funny story. I had just started uh, uh, my Dirty Draws endeavors, where I was doing these random <laughs> albums. Yeah. And uh, 88 Keys said, oh, I'm going to play this for Kanye. So uh, the Next time I went to the session, you know, I'm just waiting on 88 to bring it up while we're working on the track. And then finally he never brought it up. So I brought it up. I was just like, I was like, yo man, um, did you show Kanye my uh, dirty draws, you know? And he's just like, yeah. <laughs> you know that, you know what that face means, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He did not like that shit, so. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so I was just like, okay, well, well, oh well. What do you want me to play on? Let me make this money, <laughs> you know. <laughs> what 
point did you get to in your career that you felt like you had to come to a change and then adopt the moniker of Pan Amsterdam? The music. Um, I mean, before I did Pan Amsterdam, I was doing uh, some stuff in France and I, I didn't know I was going to be the man funk out there. Like I had this song called Man Funk with Guts, the producer. Mm. And so I started learning that I could be different people within uh within different idioms, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I didn't have to keep the word, the name, sorry, Laron the whole time. Mm. You know, I didn't, I didn't have to do that the whole time. Because before then I was doing a lot of genre crossing with my music, because I kind of got tired of just exclusively being a, a jazz musician. That, that, that didn't really fit me too well um, for, you know, self-expression and stuff like that, you know, those kind of reasons. And uh, so, yeah, man, this guy, Scott, that man, Monks, gave me these beats, thanks to Malik Crumpler. Um, and I heard these beats, man, and they were really 90s sounding. Mm. And I didn't know, I was just, you know, I didn't know if that was a diss, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I didn't know where, you know, I didn't understand what Homeboy was trying to give me. <laughs> and so I listened to it and I started kind of like joking around like, I guess he wants a rapper to be like, you know, I walk with the rats till I sleep with the who said that, give him a Kit Kat, you know, this kind of, just this kind of character, you know, and, uh, you know, I, and that's how I, I came up with Pan Amsterdam. I mean, I gave it back to him. And usually when I take the piss out of people's tracks, they don't like that. that yeah. Know? But he actually saw the, the, the coolness of it, you know. The flow is very um, reminiscent of like a, it's got a, a very Wu-Tang vibe about it. And it's very, yeah. very much New York. You can see how the influence, even though your main time in New York has been spent on the jazz scene, the influence yeah. of that sort of culture. And mm -hmm. even you even say in the album um, how New York is like a car caricature of itself just going back to what you said that in a way almost because of your reputation in the jazz world okay. by giving yourself new reinventing yourself in the sense of giving yourself the moniker of pan amsterdam and doing stuff like that it almost frees up a listener's expectations of you yeah well sort of i mean like with laron thomas i was already doing that i was already crossing genres and whatnot i think with pan amsterdam Pan, Pan Amsterdam did was it made it more of a uh, capsulization of just a hip hop moniker. Mm. You know what I'm saying so that's that's pretty much what happened there. Uh, I wanted to try and exclusively work on hip hop, you know, because I realized there was there was a lot for me to explore there. I you know as far as wordplay and whatnot, and it was quite therapeutic. So I was just like, yeah, man, just slap a character on this guy, you know? Yeah. And that, and that, I mean, like, Pan Amsterdam will never be singing. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Whereas Laurent does all that stuff. And Laurent, like, I even rap. Like, they were horrible raps. Like, back in the, <laughs> <laughs> like, in the Dirty Draws period. Oh, man, my raps suck, man. <laughs> um, they were, I listen back at them and I cringe, you know? It's really hard to listen to. But uh, I'm happy I did it because it gave me, it gave me the freedom to to and and the the room to to grow as an artist and not be uh not be afraid to explore and also still keep my feet very grounded in jazz and keep growing in that respect but i have to be honest man hip hop culture was all around us while we were working jazz whereas with charlie parker jazz was around him and then maybe like rock and roll started to come in you know what i mean yeah but but blues and r&b and gospel and, and jazz was the main music you know, in those days. Now, you know, I'm born into hip hop, um, you know, square pusher, like, you know, all these kind of people, you know, and it's just kind of like, well, if that's what it is, man, you got to make sense of that for yourself. Mm. And so that's, that's where all that came from, you know. One thing I definitely did want to ask you is, I was trying to work out how you came up with the name Pan Amsterdam. Was there a, a story behind the name? Or was it just something that through like you just came to you one day or yeah uh, uh you know madison washington mm. yeah with malik crompler and scott that man monks that duo well they shocked me when they had that do i didn't know that malik had a rap duo like that mm. and so um when scott gave me the beats 
and I realized they were rap beats. And I came up with a character. I thought Madison Washington, I thought he meant that he was talking about like maybe some corner in, in Manhattan. Cause there is a, there is a Madison, Madison out here. Mm. But there's a Washington square. And I was just like, maybe he's thinking that way, but actually he was talking about the, um, the runaway slave that had a uh, sex, uh, successful slave revolt. Mm. And uh, yeah, he, he like hijacked the ship and like, <laughs> Yeah, man, and like they, they like they like floated to freedom, like on the north side of uh, the country, and you know it's a crazy story. Uh, but yeah, this it was about this slave, this runaway slave, Madison Washington, and so, but I didn't know that at the time, so I was thinking Manhattan, so I thought about Amsterdam Avenue, so I was just like Pan Am, you know, Pan Amsterdam, and that's mm -hmm. how I came up with that. Yeah. Just after your debut album as Pan Amsterdam, you started working on. Iggy Pop's album Free, which came out in 2019, I believe. Yeah. Um, how does that come around? Iggy was the first one to play Pan Amsterdam on the air. He played him on BBC on his BBC Six show, Iggy, Iggy uh, Confidential. So mm. he played that, and that's how uh, that whole thing started. He thought I was a rapper when he first met me, and so then I went to Paris and I was working on an album with my uh, Parisian band. That's my favorite band. I love that band, you know? Mm. And so I was working with these guys and um, I ended up taking all the recordings and went back to New York and sent some of the files, raw files, over to Iggy. And Iggy's like, what is this? I was like, this is my music. This is actually what I do. 